This video is a continuation of our series on mathematical induction. Today we're going to prove an interesting type of induction that's induction in two variables. And it's going to allow us to establish something that is done in combinatorics classes, but we're going to do it in a completely different way. And that is determining the number of solutions to the equation x1 plus x2 plus all the way to x sub m, where m is a fixed positive integer, equals n, where n is a fixed positive integer, where we allow our variables to take on non-negative integer values. There's a cool combinatorial way to come up with this, where we're going to see how to establish the result using induction in two variables. So we'll do a brief recollection of how induction works to set us up for induction in two variables. In mathematical induction, we have statements indexed by the positive integers, statement 1, statement 2, statement 3, etc., usually labeled by these p things. So p of 1 is the first statement, p of 2 is the second statement, etc. And the setup is, if you can prove that statement p1, the first statement, is true, and if you can prove that given that the k statement is true, that subsequently the k plus 1th statement is true, then all of your statements are true. And that idea is a cascading effect where if the first statement is true and you have this condition, then the first statement will apply the second statement. Then applying this with k equals 2, we get the second statement applies the third statement, etc. all the way down the line. So let's see what induction in two variables looks like. So in two-variable induction, you actually have a bunch of statements indexed by pairs of positive integers. And the conditions we're going to have in our particular situation are the following. Suppose you knew that the statements PM1 were all true. So I'll put a check mark beside what those statements are. These are the statements that appear right here in the first column. Then also suppose you knew that the statements p1n are true for any positive integer n. So those are the ones along the first row. Okay, so we've established that all of these statements are true. Now, suppose there was a mechanism for proving all of the statements that are left in this entire array. There are different ways in which you could establish all of these being true. And one way is to say that if you knew that p of m n minus 1 and p of m minus 1 n were true, then p of n n was true, then you would get a cascading effect where every single statement indexed by positive integers is actually true. To get a sense why, let's take a look. So let's say we wanted to know that this statement here was true. If we reduce the left coordinate by 1, that would be looking at this statement. And if we reduce the right coordinate by 1, that would be looking at this statement right here. So the fact that this statement and this statement are true give us that this statement right over here is true. And then we have this cascading effect. Since these two are true, this is true, and these two are true, so this next statement is true, and this statement is true because these two are, these two give this statement, etc. So if you have all three of these conditions right over here, then it is definitely the case that all of our statements indexed by pairs of positive integers are going to be true. So let's see how we can use that to address our interesting combinatorial problem. So the problem we're concerned with is finding the number of solutions to the equation x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 plus xm equal to n, where m and n are fixed positive integers. And here, the x sub i's are allowed to be non-negative integers. So one of the things that you learn in a course on combinatorics is a way to experiment and figure out a potential candidate for the answer for this. And through some experimentation, you determine a candidate for the formula, and that candidate is n plus m minus 1, choose n. And then there's this interesting and miraculous method for actually justifying this combinatorially. But what I want to do is avoid that justification altogether and look at this using induction in two variables. So we'll set up a statement that says that 
The statement indexed by PMN is that the number of solutions to this thing is precisely n plus m minus 1 choose n. So let's check our three conditions to see that that's the case. So the first thing we need to do is verify that p of m1 is true no matter what m is. Now in that case, if we look at this left-hand side, we have an arbitrary number of variables, specifically m of them, but our right-hand side here is a 1. So we're wondering, how many ways are there to assign non-negative integers to x1 through xm, where the sum is 1? Well, since the sum is 1 and all of these are non-negative integers, one of them is going to be forced to be 1, and the rest will have to be 0. For example, we could assign x1 1, and then that would force all the rest of the variables to be 0. Or we could assign x2 to be 1, and that would force all the rest of the variables to be 0. Since there are exactly m variables on this side, that means there's a total of m solutions. Okay, so we need to verify that that actually matches our formula right over here. All right, so in that case, we'd have 1 plus m minus 1 choose 1, which is m choose 1, and that actually is m. Okay, so we do have the case that p of m1 is true regardless of what m is. Now the next condition we need to check is that p of 1n is true regardless of what n is. Okay, so let's analyze the situation. If m is 1, then we only have one variable on the right-hand side, and we're saying how many solutions are there to x1 equal to n. Well, x1 is forced to be n, so there's only one solution, assigning x1 to be n. So in this case, the number of solutions should be exactly 1. And let's check that our formula actually works for that. So here we have n plus our m is 1 minus 1, choose n, and that is n choose n, which actually is 1. All right, so our base cases, so to speak, actually hold. Now let's check what happens with our supposed inductive step, that last interesting part that deals with the intermediate pieces. More specifically, we want to prove that if p of m minus 1 n is true and p of m n minus 1 is true, then p of n, n is actually true itself. So how do we approach something like this? Well, the idea is this is indexing the number of solutions to our particular equation. So somehow it would make sense to reduce it to something that has one fewer variable and also something that has this number being one fewer as well. And we can actually do that by considering the value of x sub 1. So x sub 1 is either 0 or greater than or equal to 1, since it's a non-negative integer. Okay, let's look at the situation when x1 is 0. If x1 is 0, then we're looking at the number of solutions to this equation right over here, where x2, x3, etc., up to xm are non-negative integers. Now, there's exactly m minus 1 variables here, so the number of solutions to this, by our assumption that p of m minus 1 n is true, is going to be exactly n plus m minus 1 minus 1 choose n. Okay, and that uses the fact that this statement right here is true. So we've used that. Okay, so now that deals with when x1 is actually 0. So what about when x1 is not 0, it's at least 1? So we want to look at the situation where x1 is allowed to be any positive integer while all of the rest of the variables are non-negative. Well, we can transform this to an equation of the type that we want as well. What we can do is reduce x1 by 1. If we do that, we'd have to reduce the right-hand side by 1 as well. But now, 
the number of solutions where x1 is greater than or equal to 1 is the number of solutions to this subsequent equation where x1 minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. And so we have still m variables, x2 through xm, together with this new variable x1 minus 1. And we're asking for the number of non-negative ways to assign these variables to numbers so that the sum is n minus 1. Okay, and luckily, because p of m n minus 1, where the right-hand side is n minus 1 and the number of variables is m, is a true statement. So the number of solutions to this is equal to n minus 1 plus m minus 1, choose n minus 1. And so the total number of solutions that we have for this entire original equation is equal to the sum of these two numbers. It's the number of situations where x1 is 0, together with the number of ones where x1 is at least 1. All right, if we look at this expression, the sum, now if we actually compute what's inside of these binomial coefficients, the one at the top is n plus m minus chu choose n. And the one at the bottom is n plus m minus 2 choose n minus 1. And fortunately for us, these two are adjacent things in Pascal's triangle. And so their sum will turn out to be exactly this expression right over here n plus m minus 1 choose n. And that's exactly what we wanted to prove, that the number of solutions is, in fact, this quantity right over here. So a great way to use induction in two variables to establish a combinatorial fact that usually requires a little bit of insight to be able to develop, but can be done systematically because of double induction or induction in two variables.